stuff. It's just hilarious. Amen. How y'all doing? I hope y'all so doing well. <laughs> three things that we like to have you to do. Like, share. Don't don't like and share that first part. But like, share. Uh, let everybody know that we are on and mm -hmm. we will be dealing with relationships tonight. And, uh, the title is Before You Go Off. Before You Go Off. Yikes. Dun, dun, dun. Um, the second thing <laughs> that we like to do is find out where you're tuning in from. So wherever you are in the world, thank yeah. you so much for tuning in. You're probably Zoomed out, meeting out, oh, I'm sure. Out. webinar out. And you said, you know what? I am going to put this uh, broadcast on and we thank you. Like, yes, for we real. do. For inviting so, us into your space. Yes. So if you're Appreciate on it. YouTube, if you're on our Facebook page, my Facebook page, if you're on our online campus, at the outlet dot online dot church thank y'all mm -hmm. for being a part tonight um we we just absolutely appreciate the opportunity to speak into your life mm -hmm. and the third thing i put a post out on um I guess it was my personal stories. I put a poll out rather. My hair is getting out of control. Yes, like join this. the club. Join well, the club. Join the club. Well, yeah, we. I mean, it. We we all out here like we all out here. You know, and and so I'm I'm like I don't know what to do. So I'm leaving it up to y'all. Do y'all want her to like try and cut my? I hair? think I can do it. Now, mind you, I don't know if y'all know the first the first time I did it, but it was how many years ago now? Ten. Ten years ago, and we were broke, and so, but he needed a haircut, and he allowed me to do it, and I didn't know what I was doing, and so I accident. Well, it was an accident. I I guess I buzzed. Um, we call a it patch a plug. of hair. We call it a plug. She plugged. Yeah. She ran the plug twice. I yeah. did, and. You had to shave it all I off. I had to shave all my hair <laughs> off. So I had her cutting my hair on a Sunday morning before I had to go to church. And I was on staff and yeah. I had to get up and do the welcome and the announcements. And back in the day, you know, you had to wear suits. And you, you had to had wear to suits do. and tie the whole nine, right? I mean, and so so what I did was I went for the alfalfa part in the, like the middle of your head. She went for the swirl, which is a no-no. And so, But I didn't know that the swirl was... The swirl was important. Yeah, well... I found out <laughs> and I went bald and so y'all know I'm already a tad bit light skin just a tad just a tad not bit. a whole lot and light descended from heaven it did and it top. shone on his head and he looked very angelic so everybody was just like you know, Vince, I don't know if you've been spending time with God but you look really bright. look really holy I mean, I look. so it was in the middle of winter I had to wear a skull cap but I'm, it's getting desperate like that y'all so I'm, I'm you know, so if I have a second go at it, I, prom I promise I won't go for the swirl. She's first. promising to not go for my swirl. Amen. All righty. <laughs> well, amen. <laughs> so tonight we are going to talk about the topic of before you go, go off. off. Before yes. you go off. Before you fly off the handle. And this is not a if. This is a, a win because absolutely now, now now there are some people who are extremely self-disciplined, self-controlled, where you have no emotional outburst whatsoever. <laughs> you don't let your words fly off the handle. You don't do that. Um, but for That's the other 99 percent of us, we have to be mindful of our yes, words. Very intentional. What we're saying. And mm -hmm. now that we're living in such close proximics with our loved ones. Yes. Um, and for those who may be working, you know, we've been having conversations with people who, you know, they used to have control over their schedule. They could set their own hours, set their yeah. own meetings, set their own appointments. Well, since we all have gone virtual, it's yeah. like, oh, no, no, no. We're going to do meeting after meeting after meeting after yeah. meeting. Yeah. And, and I feel like, and for those of you who, who have been Zoom meeting all day, I'm, I feel, I'm just, I'm so sorry because I realized that while we're in the house, there is a lot more access going on from our companies to us because we're always on our devices. And so we just got to find times to pull away. Everybody's saying they can't hear us. Oh, can y'all hear can us? Can y'all hear us? Well, let's check. Let's see. Okay. What, what am I on? Let's try it. I think I'm, I'm going to say. Oh, oh, no, we here. We're back. We here. Are we good okay. now? Are we back? Y'all let, let us know. <laughs> If uh, we back, if we not, oh no, they can hear us. We y'all can hear us. Amen. Oh, amen. Awesome. Oh, whew. <laughs> We're about to delve into the word, and we ain't we ain't going on. So we are live, live as y'all can see. Yeah. Yeah. This is not pretty recorded. Live. This is live as it gets. Live at five. So well, eight. <laughs> um, 
Go ahead, continue with no. your story. So yeah, and I realized it's more access. So I was just saying that we have to kind of find ways to rest, mm -hmm. right? Because I just don't think in this season it's going to be given to us. It's not going to passively come. We've got to fight for our rest and find those times. So in the comments, can you all let us know some things that you're doing to yeah. unplug when you're in close proximity with everyone or, you know, being at the house? Like, what are some things that you do to help you unplug yeah. and help you reset? And uh, we want to talk about our words. We want to talk about our responses. We want to talk about how to handle irritation tonight. Because Amen. the measure of our <laughs> spiritual maturity is found in our response when things don't go our way and when we perceive things to happen and to be said outside of what we'd like. Absolutely. And so if you have your Bibles, go with me to uh, James chapter 1, verse 19. James chapter 1, verse 19. And uh, we're going to be reading in the New Living Translation to start. We'll read uh, verses 19 and 20. And then my wife, you'll pick up in the Amplified as well in James yeah. 19 and yeah. 20. And so it says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, <clears throat> slow to speak, and slow to get angry. It says, human anger does not produce the righteousness of God. Verse 19 in the uh, Amplified says, Oh, understand this, my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear, a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense and to get angry. Uh, for a man's anger does not promote the righteousness of God, which is and requires. And I don't know. That's the Amplified something. The classic. Else. The classic. Okay. And you have the so updated So I have one. the Amplified. I don't know what that says. AMPC. That mine just the says classic. Amplified. So we so, might have to add us another Bible. We have to add us another Bible. So yeah. I, I love this rendition. It says, understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to hear. Be a careful, thoughtful listener slow to speak, a speaker of carefully chosen words, and slow to anger, patient, reflective, and forgiving. Mm. So th hmm. there was a word there that said that we need to be quick to hear, yeah. slow to speak, mm -hmm. slow, to, slow anger. to anger. Well, what happens naturally is that we're slow to hear, mm -hmm. quick to speak, oh, absolutely. quick to anger. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. So taking the moment to be slow to our response and immediate in our hearing oh, yeah. is that we have to reflect. And, and here's a quote we want you all to write down and remember and anchor on tonight. I mean, if we had a lesson for the night, this one would be it. Yeah. It is simply when you take time to reflect, you'll have fewer moments that you regret. Let me say that again. When you take time to reflect, you will have fewer moments that you regret. Yeah, a lot of times when we are in the moment and we're heated, we're saying things that later on we wish we probably had, had never said. Mm -hmm. And so I think stopping and reflecting on what was said, giving us a chance to create a response, not out of anger or out of emotion, but out of um, calmness, right? So where we're, where we're, when we're communicating, we're communicating not out of hurt, but we've had time to process it and I think that's important that we give ourselves time to process what was actually said <laughs> and let me update this also for our technological age so let's talk about communicating by text message or communicating using words yeah. um, over digital means whether it be email uh, whether it be you know an inbox etc mm -hmm. what we should probably progress to do especially with critical conversations is communicate data by text never try to communicate emotion, feelings yeah. or emotion by text i think it could sometimes i mean sometimes it works and i think the person has to know you right to know kind of how it's coming across and even then it could sometimes be a little anytime iffy. anytime you leave the other person to interpret your heart you're leaving room for error yes. so what we want to say in in a heated debate because don't it feel good when someone says something and you perceive it's a tad bit crosswise and you have that boiling anger that's just rising up and you were like, <laughs> I am going to set it all today. My wife likes to call it nice nasty. You have a yeah. way of saying, you know. Uh, and we uh, typically do that at work. Oh. So when a colleague. Per, per my last email, mm -hmm. which means, did you not hear what I just said? Yeah. Uh, to my understanding, like, what are you missing? 
Like mm -hmm. we have a way to be nice, nasty, or uh, in our text messages when we start sending, we could be excited. We could be trying to communicate jubilation and we're sending our words in all caps and exclamation marks. And the person on the other end receiving it could perceive that we are just yelling the entire time. Yeah. Uh, talking to those who lead teams, supervisors, business owners, managers. When you're communicating to those in which you are leading, mm -hmm. it's important that in your communication to uh, the hearer, you must communicate stability first. You must communicate that all is well first in your initial conversation. I believe that it's irresponsible for any leader, whether it's a leader of a relationship, leader mm -hmm. of an organization, to communicate and leave instability just floating in the air. So explain to us what that means when you're saying leave instability. Break that down a little bit more. All right. So when others are hearing what we're saying, especially when it comes out the blue, we have to learn the art of reframing. And we'll spend an entire lesson on reframing when we get to James chapter three. But we, we need to make it a point where we consider how is this going to be perceived by the person who is on the other end of what I'm communicating hmm. as opposed to, listen, I just say it and you need to just receive it how I, how I say it. And if you too sensitive to receive it the way that I say it, uh -oh. that's, that's immature from a leadership perspective. And quite honestly, those who say I say it the way I say it and you need to receive it how I say it. Those are sometimes the most emotionally immature and weak individuals that Ooh. I have. I mean, and I don't mean to say weak. It's very in, harsh. But it's the truth. <laughs> Sometimes those who are very brash in their communication. Or abrasive. Or abrasive. Yeah. Cannot receive the same type of communication. That's true. That's true. And a lot of times you'll see those who dish it really can't take it. Um, however, when we're working with people like that, we can't be abrasive like them because two, two wrongs don't two make wrongs a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> So we have to learn how to communicate in a way that um, respects the other person in a way that also makes sure our triggers are not being coming through in our communication. Right. Because sometimes we can get triggered. Y'all Y'all yeah. have been there. And, and you want to lead into tough conversations with yeah. love. You want to lead in by laying a foundation of I care for the person. Anytime we're talking, anytime we're communicating, we always want to communicate that I care for you as an individual. Yeah. And, and it's important that we separate the actions of an individual from who the yeah, individual so you is. you actually will maybe converse over the problem, not the person. Exactly. Right? And, exactly. and, and refrain from making the person the problem. Exactly. Because <laughs> then that comes off as accusatory. So, you know, let's just say there was a person in which you were leading, and we're talking strictly business right now, and you gave them a project, you gave them a task, you gave them an assignment. They did not follow through on that task or assignment and they dropped the ball. What you have to do coming in is say, listen, um, you know, you were, you're, you're a great asset to our team or plus minus plus plus minus plus, or listen, we believe in you. However, this is what, not you are what, this is what we need to address. Uh, your lack of time management, your procrastination, your inability to follow through on details is really hurting us and it's hurting your performance. Watch this. How can we work together to ensure that we can deliver a better outcome going forward? That's that's business wise. Mm -hmm. Now let's come home. Let's come home where, where it gets real. So and that's another thing mm -hmm. for a lot of the businesses, entrepreneurs and, you know, um, people that are working corporate. Bring your manners that you use with your coworkers. Bring them home. Bring no manners home. Bring them home, because a lot of times we tend to do that at work. But we don't extend that same grace in the house. Like we are the best customer service reps <laughs> at work. Like someone could be going smooth <laughs> off on us on the other line. You know, prior to going into full time ministry, I worked in a service industry. I used to repair internets, and <laughs> you know, people would blame you for, for their whatever, failing, whatever, yeah. whatever reason. And they would, you would get lambasted the whole time. They would just lay in you on one side or the other, and and you are trained to say. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry for that experience for you. Um, you've called me. What can I do to make things right? Hmm. We have all those manners corporate. Yes. We come home and we say, just, it, say it one more time. We just lose it. Say it one more time. <laughs> say it one more time. 
Oh gosh. So, yes. So, we have to give our family grace. Yes. Give our family grace, give our relationships grace. Mm -hmm. And when we come home uh, to communicate stability first, say, hey, listen, framing. Again, we'll talk about this framing. in James 3. Frame your conversation. Say, hey, um, you know, I appreciate all that you do. Yeah. I, I really do. Yeah. However, here's this one area that, or here are these multiple areas that maybe we can together go through to mm -hmm. see how we can come to resolution. Because as I said in James 1.20, if we look back there, it says human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So we naturally think like, okay, I'm going to show them. And I, I I'm going to show them. I've been guilty of it. I'm oh, like, we all oh, have. we all have. Oh, you didn't come correct? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Said it all. <laughs> not in a good way. <laughs> but it says human anger does not produce the yeah. righteousness that God produced. So if we really are spiritually mature and growing in our walk with the Lord, we have to say, okay, my anger and handling things my way mm -hmm. will not produce the outcome that I am looking for. So what are you trying to do? Get your point across or grow the relationship up so that you all can walk in closer and greater harmony and unity? Yeah, that's the thing. If you're, if you're just conversing to win or to let everybody see your point, then you're, it's, it's not going to go over well, number one. Um, I think everybody has to compromise and be open right it says be slow or quick to listen be open to hearing what others are truly saying and sometimes we we hear when we kind of go back when we, when we reflect we kind of sometimes see that we heard it wrong yeah and then we we popped off for something that wasn't even said in that way and so i think it's important i love what that scripture says let's be patient let's be forgiving let's be reflective yes yeah. yes Amen. Amen. Now, now, why is this so important before we go off to be quick to listen? I believe it's in Ecclesiastes, I want to say. Maybe you all can look it up, type, type in Google, or maybe you all know. It says, uh, a fool speaks before they hear the whole, whole conclusion matter. of the matter. Yeah. And um, one thing that yeah. I've had to grow in as a leader I and think we all had as, to. as a husband yeah. is before I respond... I want to hear everything. Give me everything. And when people are talking, when your spouse is talking, when your coworkers are talking, when your boyfriend or girlfriend or children or parents are talking, instead of listening strictly for the words and trying to catch people on a technicality, ask for the wisdom that comes from Holy Spirit in what is their heart attempting to communicate to me during this time? Yes. So, you know, if, if you're leading people, they are going to have complaints. They're going to have concerns. And, and, and what I've had to learn, number one, uh, the weight of a pastor, the weight of the, the head of an organization, what you say matters. Oh, my gosh. And since ripple effects mm -hmm. and it impacts people. And I think sometimes more than we know. Um, now, I will say this. Sometimes we're, we're saying things and people get hurt unintentionally we're, and we never meant to say something. I know there are times where I've triggered somebody and I never meant to trigger anybody, you know, and that's going to happen. And so I, I'm not going to we're not going to sit up here and tell you that yeah. everything you're, you're saying is going to be taken uh, lovely and in a, or in a good, positive you, manner. You can try to say things the right way and still be taken out of context. You really can. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, because it's how the person heard it. And yeah. we can't really control how they cannot. hear it or the filter they're hearing things from. But what we can do is do our best to um, show our heart and show, and have our words be seasoned with grace. And that's yes. what the word tells us, to have yes. our words be seasoned with grace. Yes. That we're saying everything in love. We're speaking truth in yes. love. Yes. Amen. I hope that helps somebody. Yeah, that's, <laughs> but that, in, in essence, is the nature of what it means to be a leader. So. Yeah. As a pastor, I'm mindful that I just can't. Y'all, I can't say everything that comes to my head. I can't. I just have to. But, buddy, I have to some listen. stuff come up there. You I just got to. Gotta... Well, in marriage, I can't say everything that comes to my head. No. I can't even say everything that I am pushed to the edge to want to say. Again, verse 20, human anger doesn't produce the righteousness or the change 
that God desires out of the relationship. And when you're quiet, sometimes people will tell you all everything you, you need to know. Everything. everything you need to know. Just just be quiet. But I will say there's that old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Y'all, that's a lie. That's a lie. It's a lie. Words can hurt. Words have impact. And it's one of those things that when you say it, it's out there. Mm -hmm. You cannot take them back. And so it's very crucial that, you know, the, the, even the word teaches us life and death are in the power of our tongue. And when we say things, what are we saying? Yeah. And that's a good way to kind of indicate to us what's our self-talk like. Hmm. What are what Let's are people hearing? Yeah, ahead. like, um, and what I've been I've been conscious of this lately. So, um, anytime I'm feeling something like any any kind of bit of anxiety, I go, "Ooh, what have I been talking to myself?" And it comes so naturally because you're just thinking. These are just thoughts, right? But your thoughts are sending you on a path, and so you have to be careful about what you're saying to yourself. And if it's negative, you have to you have to start counteracting some of that stuff. Yes, we're at home. Yes, we're quarantined. Yes, the kids are probably getting on our nerves. However, our family is blessed. You know, we're together. Our family's healthy. Our family has, I mean, you have to think about what's good and say, okay, Lord, you have given me grace for this season and I can do this. And so just kind of start counteracting some of those things we've been telling ourselves. You know, I, I, I'll share an honest moment with everybody yeah. on uh, the camera. So there are times where I go back and reflect on relationships in my life that are broken. You know, I don't want you all to think that in my life, every relationship that I've wanted to work has worked. Uh, there are some relationships in my life that I genuinely desire to want them to work, but they don't. And, uh, you know, that's not easy. Me being a very relational individual. Yeah. Um, you know, wanting to have an amicable relationship with different individuals is important, but sometimes I let people be what they're going to be. But when I reflect on what broke down, in the relationship it always is not the other person there are moments where you had a part to play in it as well and, and I'm, I'm going to be as honest as mm. I can be with mm -mm. y'all tonight when when I became a senior pastor I immediately understood things that I didn't understand serving on other church staffs hmm. uh, what I mean by that is there were things that I would say or things that I would do, not from a malicious standpoint, but just from a, you know, I thought that it, I needed to say it at the moment. I thought I needed to say it at the time. And I realized being a senior pastor, every seed you sow, good, watch this, and bad, you're going to end up seeing, similar to parents, if you're out there, let me know if this has happened to you so y'all can give us a heads up. But have <laughs> your kids done something that you didn't necessarily tell them that they needed to do, but they did. And you're like, oh, I did. I, I did that when you, I was. Uh, you almost saw yourself in your kids. You, you yeah. see yourself. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I began to hear statements and begin to have statements said to me because as a pastor, mm -hmm. whew, you, boy, let me, let me tell you, you better love, better love the Lord and know he called you. Um, there have been some statements that have been shared. I mean, knock the wind out myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting up there saying, man. And when I was in that same role, I remember saying something you said similar. Some stuff. And so, you know, it, it when you take an evaluation of your own life of what could I have said better? Yeah. Not that I would change what I said, but what could I have said better? And some of these things you'll probably never know until you get in that position. Because I will yeah. say you didn't know how you came off until you became a senior pastor and then people are talking to you like you talk to you know my former senior pastor right so yeah, um, I, I just want to publicly i'm gonna go every senior pastor i ever worked for <laughs> whether knowingly or unknowingly mm -hmm. i'm sorry like i because you live you learn you grow and you don't understand watch this so when you understand that you as an individual you're flawed Yes. When you understand that you don't say everything right. That's right. When someone else says something crazy off the wall, you can extend the grace and say, listen, grace. I get it. I understand. Yeah. Been there. Okay. How can we work together? And that's where growth comes from. So, you know, in relationships, let's get off our high horse. That's right. Um, let's stop saying I never do. I never do. Don't, don't you say nothing. Never say never. Say, I would like to think that I would not dot, dot, dot. Yeah. But get off that high horse. Yeah. And uh, walk in humility. And this is important 
uh, as we close tonight and and uh, make sure if you have any questions uh, I'm checking the comments on Facebook YouTube and our online campus and uh, for those who are out there and you have my cell phone number uh, if you could also text me uh, if you see questions that I'm not getting to. Yes. Um, and there's a number inside the comments, 770-667-4899. If you have questions that you want to text for us to answer, I actually have one that's a hot one that we'll talk about in just a moment. But as we close, this is important because James 1.26 says, if you claim to be religious, meaning you claim to have a relationship with God, mm -hmm. But don't, don't control, control your, your tongue. tongue. Mm. You're fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Yikes. So the measure of our spiritual maturity is how well can we control our responses. If you want to see where is my barometer, where do I need to come up in the things of God? Where do I need to ask for Holy Spirit's help more? Find out, am I a person who is spending more time being quick to listen, get all the information, and am I becoming slower to speak? Yes. And am I getting slower to anger? Again, all of us are on a journey. I don't all get this us. right every mm -hmm. day. My wife doesn't get this right oh, every day. absolutely not. You don't get this right every day. Mm -hmm. We're all on a journey in our responses. But if you want to measure your spirituality, it's not about how much words you know, but it's how much <laughs> words you display. Now when say you that pressed. again. It's not about how much words you know. Listen, it's not know. about how much words you know. A how much to the man. do you display? Yes. And so I end with the scripture just because people th one? three and seven which version it don't even matter i'm, I'm reading out of the um, new living okay but it says people contain all kinds of animals and birds reptiles and fish but no one can tame the tongue it is restless and evil full of deadly poison now this scripture just kind of reveals to us that our tongue is, you know, it's small little organs right in our mouth. But let me tell you, without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we are going to pop off and say a lot of things that we probably should never have never been said. Yeah. Right. And so it's saying we try to tame our tongue, but the reality is that no man can tame the tongue. You're going to need God's help for that. Amen. And so if you're one that, you know, you curse or you, you tend to fly off really fast, I would just ask that you go ahead and pray to the Lord to bridle your tongue and um, give you what to say, when to say it, restrain you when needed to, Lord. And I will tell you, y'all, he will. Yes. <laughs> he will. He will literally just stop you in your tracks from saying something you know you should be saying. And so I just want to encourage you all that the Holy Spirit definitely is um, needed for this material. I don't, I don't think we could do this without him. At all. At all. At all. So, all just right. Give so, all a, a question that came in. We have a question. Okay, what is it? Speaking in marriage. Mm -hmm. What happens? Oh, Lord. When your spouse does not like their in laws, do not agree with the in laws. This is totally and left to what we're talking about. But no, and the in laws are creating a problem in the marriage. Oh, you want to How first? do we handle that? Um, I think first I need to give some general parameters as it relates to um, how to communicate across family lines. Because although we all become one flesh and we get married, we're all one family. That's something I say at every wedding. It takes time to grow into a strong enough relationship where um, you all can have healthy conversations, tough conversations right off the bat um, in, in without, you know, it causing a flare up. Yes. So the, the best practices, here's the wisdom and best practices. If a spouse has a concern with the other spouse's parents, so their in-laws, mm -hmm. the spouse with the problem cannot, and I suggest, let me, let, and let me say this too, let me, let me, let me clarify this. This is, I'm speaking as Vince, okay? So I'm not speaking with chapter and verse, thus says the Lord. And, and you pastors and preachers and ministers and evangelists out there, let me tell y'all something. Mm -hmm. When it's your opinion, you better say it's your opinion. Don't be, don't be coming off like you the Bible and you ain't got no chapter and verse. So I'm talking from Vince. So you are... Vinceology. Vinceology. So you are welcome to reject what I'm saying. But I'm going to give you just some wisdom that I have seen over the years. 
if, for instance, if I have an issue with my wife's parents, I cannot go to my wife's <laughs> parents and deal with the issue, especially if it's in regards to our marriage. That's right. I can't immediately go and do that. The first step is we have to come together. Yep. And we need to flesh out what is the root of the issue and figure out where is the source of contention coming from. So the two of us, we talk and see where the source of contention is coming from. Now, when we talk and get on the same page as to number one, where is the issue coming from? Number two, what will be our plan of action? Yeah. Then the person whose family the issue is coming from has to go and communicate a strong front to the parents that are creating the issue. Now, what I said takes a whole lot of in-between work, too, because the issue that happens is in marriage, it takes a while for us to cling to yes. each other. yes. It takes a while. The word of God says that a man should leave their father and mother and cleave to their wife. And this is a process. But I believe that a part of the cleaving process is us getting fused into one flesh. Right now, while we're getting fused, we do realize that mother and dad or whoever your parents are had ties to you before your wife did. Well, or before, your husband did. well before. And so there's that fine line between honoring them while also correcting. And I think you can do both. Yeah. I, and I think you have to do both in some cases. Um, well, you you got to think, y'all, when, when, when a marriage happens, there's a lot of triggers that goes off because a change has taken place, right? And so within your, whoever, whatever the family member is dishing all of this out, there's a trigger that's been set off inside yeah. of them that's making them react a certain way yeah. to the marriage. And, and it's nothing that the spouse could have done, yeah. right? It's just you were there and yeah. you got married and it changed everything. Um, and it does change everything. However, we have to kind of, you know, walk in patience. But I will say this, um, if, it's, if it's a like an abusive type thing where, you know, um, the family is like talking about, the spouse the in spouse. front of the other family members or in front of your face or something like and that. And you around for it. You, you, you better stop it. You, the spouse that's the family the, yes. has to shut it down. Yep. And, and, yeah. and in these moments, so, so there's small moments that help to fuse the cleaving bond. And it's these moments of faith saying, although in uh, respect to my family of origin, yeah. I just met, in a sense, no matter how long y'all been dating, no matter how long y'all been together, I still just met the person that I am married to. And I am going to now vouch for the one that I'm married to, even if it causes disagreement with my family of origin. And those moments right there, let me tell y'all. Those are hard. Those, those are not are only hard, hard moments. moments, but let's just say you don't own up to your end of that, you actually create more division yes, in you your do. own house. Yeah, you do. And, and, and what happens is as we, if we keep failing these moments where it's time for me to talk to my family to say, I do not appreciate the disrespect in my, that you're showing toward my marriage, because if they're talking about your spouse, like I'm, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your spouse. No, Let no. Me tell, they're talking about you. I'm talking about you too. Y'all are one flesh now. So anything that any, any kind of uh, whatever derogatory statements they're making towards one is towards both. And, and listen, listen, listen. In, in, so my wife and her mother are very close. Yes. And, and they are really, I would say, best friends. Yeah. We, well, yeah, we were or are still. Yeah. yeah. But there, there, there came a point when after we got married, both of our parents, things changed. Because it's a <laughs> shift. So it, it went from that's my baby to that's their spouse yeah. and and so it doesn't mean the relationship is no longer gone it just means the relationship needs to update and so you have to communicate that it's not a competition of right. do i love my family of origin more than i love my spouse it's more of i love my spouse 
but that love is different from how I love my family of origin. It is. This is this is not a competition. Yeah. So as this as soon as let's just say you're the person that's to go talk to your family, you have to communicate that this is not a competition. This isn't who do you love more? Who do you, that listen, if they're if they're even manipulating you with that, after all I've done for you, yeah. after all I've been that through for you, I have statement. brought you to Listen, we are not negating all that they've done. You can't take any of that back, nor can you pay any of that back. Right. But what you have to say is, I'm not negating all that you've done. However, for where I'm at today, I can't be around for whatever the root cause of the contention and so is. if you have to maybe not go see them as much, that, that, that's okay. You know, because if it's bringing toxicity into your home, that's, that's not a healthy place. That's not a healthy place. And some family members can be a little toxic and you just got to know which ones are which. And, you know, love them, but sometimes love them from a distance if you have to, right? If it's that bad. I don't know your situation, but for the one who um, asked this question, but if it's that bad, do what you need to do to keep your marriage and your house peaceful and healthy. But now if you choose while married your family of origin, just know that's who, you, that's who you've that's chosen who you, that's who you're for life. You're cleaving now. You're cleaving you're to still, the family. You're still cleaving to your family. And it's origin. resonating in whoever the spouse is saying, okay, so they've just, they've just chosen who they really love. Or not even who they really love, but who, who they're willing to protect and lead. Which is, when, you know, when we went to the marriage um, vows and we, and we said our vows in front of God and everybody, we were saying, I submit to your leadership. Well, now my leadership has just abandoned me. My leadership has just put me out there and, and let people talk about me, let people embarrass me and harass me. And that's and, not okay. And husbands, if, if when, when, or wives, when the, the wife goes and she chooses her family of origin over the husband, it tells the husband that I'm not here to be that rib cage. I'm not here to be your help me. Mm -hmm. I'm here to love you to a point. And again, you've just oh. disrespected his leadership. As if, if we go back to our family, you're just yeah. basically saying, yeah, you're not enough. And these are harsh. This is harsh. And, and, and sometimes it's very complicated when you're going through this process. We understand like we're not saying this stuff is easy to do, mm -hmm. but it's something that has to be done for the sanity of not only your marriage, but what you're doing is you're prioritizing your life in the in the order that it should be prioritized yeah. and marriage. Let me tell you, marriage does come before everything else. It's everything. God, your spouse, the, God, your spouse, your kids. And then your family, and then everybody family else. of origin and friends. Mm -hmm. And that that truly is the priority that must take place. Yeah. Um, man, we could we could actually have a whole night on just how to deal with the in-laws so that you maintain <sighs> peace. Yeah. You are a peacemaker, not a peacekeeper. Where you're trying to placate both sides. Peacemaker says, I've got to have the tough conversations for the sake of all of the relationships that I love. And so if one spouse, again, is having concerns about yeah. their in-laws, mm -hmm. the home of origin, wherever it is, if, if my wife had concerns about my family of origin, mm -hmm. then it's on me to go to my family of origin and have um, loving dialogue to find out, you know, what we can do best. Yeah. Um, it is not the time for me to go to my family of origin and say, well, you know how my wife is, y'all. Oh, please don't throw them under the bus. Don't throw them under the bus. And that is throwing them under the bus. Or if, let's say, one spouse doesn't feel comfortable going to a family outing, don't call your family and say, well, she don't want to come. No, I would, I would come. No, no, we're, we're unable to make it. That's what you say. It's, it's a united front. And, and listen, listen, when you're having some like real vulnerable, personal disagreements, arguments, you know, something just major happens yeah. and you think I need to run back to my family of origin and tell them because they are my safe space. Listen, you and your spouse could have made up, had some makeup sex, important, important. And, and y'all could be good. And when that spouse comes back around the family, the family looking at them like, mm. Oh yeah. Family mm. got the side eye. Mm. So you've got to have outlets keyword outside <laughs> of your family of origin where you can run to in a safe space and say, hey, I need some prayer. This is what's going on. Can yeah. you hold me accountable while we work through this? Because and let me just tell you, family do, does not need to know your issues. Can I say that again? Family does not need to know your marital issues. 
Sometimes we go through things and we have to get, like he says, a wisdom or counsel of uh, people, wise counsel outside of the family base. Because what's going to happen is people have already kind of taken sides, especially if you whatever with the family. Oh, oh, listen, my mom is going to take my side. And my mom, my side. And her the, family. The whole time. At, like all day, every day. So we, it's easy to run to somebody who we know is going to agree with us. Yeah. And so, and that's the thing, if, if your motive is to tell your family to get a posse behind you, yep. to say, yeah, you're right, girl, yep. you should be doing this, yep. that, that's wrong. That, that's so wrong. That's not the kind of wisdom you need at this time. It's, yeah. You need an unbiased party to look into, to look into everything and to see what's really going on because yeah. your family is too biased at, at times. Yeah. Man. So. So. Uh. That's all we're going to touch on. Tonight. Yeah. Thank you. That's enough. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> enough. A, that's enough. That's enough. enough. Uh, but there's so much. You, you, you definitely want to come back on next Tuesday. We'll continue in James chapter two. On this Friday, we have really heard the request of our community asking for direct support for marriages, for couples, for those dating, engaged, getting ready to have blended families. We're going to be offering a free marriage webinar with our marriage counselors. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I, we not only uh, have gone to intensive marriage counseling for mm -hmm. an entire week, my wife and I are in marriage counseling once a month. Yes. And it's important for us to lead a, a church. It's important for us to lead our lives that we make sure we, we take care of the issues that we can see and the blind spots that we can't see. Yeah. And uh, Vince and Allison Hungate, who are our marriage counselors mm -hmm. will be joining us right where we are right now We're so excited on this about upcoming it. Friday at yes. 7 p.m. It's a free webinar. Mm -hmm. Make sure you pass uh, our information on to friends, to loved ones, those who have questions about marriage. Uh, you can send them in ahead of time and uh, we will make sure we get to them. But we are committed over the next month to really touch on everything we're at right after we come out of marriage we're going to be dealing with unmarried and deal with yes. the landscape that it is today mm -hmm. um so we're, we're just committed to coming alongside you and helping you have healthy thriving Amen. wonderful relationships everywhere that you go <laughs> i Amen. love it yes amen well we want to pray and then close out tonight so uh, if you would just join us. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We thank, thank you. you. I praise you for every person that's watching, uh, every person who may have relationship questions, struggles, concerns. Give to them wisdom yes, and understanding in you, Father. Uh, for those whose households may have turmoil, may have dismay, may mm. be in disarray. Um, God, I'm asking that your love is revealed. Show them how much you love them so that they can be that example in their house. For it says, your goodness turns people to repentance yes, so father i say that your love will turn those situations mm -hmm. around we thank you for these things in jesus name amen amen, amen. we love you all love so you much guys. thank y'all so much for tuning in tonight and uh we'll see y'all a wonderful night later on this week bye-bye bye-bye